Um, good morning, folks. Jack Allsop here. I um, hope you're all keeping safe and I hope you're all well. Uh, today's small session is about um, FBR, File Backup and Recovery. Uh, it's not something we've promoted much over the years. Um, however, I do think it has a great place to play in the disaster recovery area, particularly for what I've always called mobile warriors, laptop people, sales people, particularly people that do jobs like um, high-rise building maintenance. They quite often run around with uh, laptops. Um, sorry, I do need to say one thing before we continue, uh, sorry. Uh, if there's questions, could you please leave them to the last? So hopefully I will answer all your questions as we go through this today. But as I was saying, um, I've run into quite a few partners that look after people that deal with high-rise building maintenance staff, and they run around with these laptops, they pull them out of a bag, they plug them into the lift maintenance system, the, the fire alarm systems, the air conditioning systems, you name it, everything else that's going on, um, and they don't back them up. The software that they use, they can get hold of that pretty easily. The data, not so easy, okay? Particularly if there's been changes made that have not been committed to a system, they're just testing something. You know, there's some building management guy somewhere has asked for a change with lighting and they just want to try it for a couple of weeks to see if that suits the residents or the, or the uh, tenants in the office. And so quite often they don't commit to change, but they just let it run for a while. It's like a router, similar. It's called PLC programming. <clears throat> and they don't commit to change. And if they lose it, they go, mm, now what do I do? So people like that, uh, accountants, real estate agents, uh, they're really, really uh, poor with uh, looking after their data. And so what I'm going to do today is, is step you through it. Now, I am going to use this particular laptop that I'm sitting at. It's my laptop at home. The only thing that I've done while we sign into this thing, I will show you. Uh, this is, if I come back over here, I've logged into my portal as uh, an MSP. I have an account that allows me to log in as an MSP, so I've logged into my MSP. And it's obviously going to ask me to dual factor authentication, wonderful stuff that it is. And verify. Yep, here we go. It always says US portal because that's the portal we log into even though the engine system that we use is sitting down in the next DC data centre in Sydney. So it comes in here, news and announcements and whatever else and stuff, wonderful. Hey Jack, it's uh, Peter here. I can't see anything. Uh, am I meant to be seeing something? Uh, I thought my screen was being shared. I do apologise. Thank you, I sir. I do apologise. Thank you very much for that, Peter. Uh, folks, just to say, I logged in here as uh, my demonstration account. It's just, just an MSP account. I thought when I started the webinar, it automatically set that up, so it doesn't. So that's okay. Um, sorry. Logged into the, the uh, you know, login at storagecraft.com. I clicked on this thing, and it opens up this, and of course, dual... Um, Dual factor, two-factor authentication asked me to do that, so you missed that rather exciting component. And then I bring myself into here, and you'll ask, you'll see here that it's asking me for authentication again. Um, this section here is actually an iframe. It takes me off to a completely separate portal. Some people get a little confused about it. It's just the same username and password that you logged into this originally. So in here, I just type it in again. Um, please don't follow my example because it's normally a username and password that you need to use here um, because of the confusion around 
my username and password, um, I can't use emails because I've got one account to log in for this and one account to log in for that and whatever else. So this is file backup and recovery and the most important part I can say here is with Backup Analyzer. Okay, so you can have a look at the dashboard and this is the dashboard. You can have a look at backup configurations and there's a standard configuration, there's rule sets, there's account settings. What I'm more interested in is the account, uh, is the backup standard configuration. So I've created one. So what I'd like to do first, I've obviously deployed an agent and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, but let's have a look and it's most important to understand this before you sort of get an account up here. So I'm going to have a look at this and this is to understand what this thing's all about. So my standard configuration is based on the StorageCraft master backup um, configuration. So you can see here um, you can edit and edit this rule set. So this is the master backup file extensions. Okay, so you can have a look at this stuff. All right, uh, not editable. You go, yep, fine. Okay, I agree. Go back. So these are some standard ones here that uh, common user data. My pictures, my pictures, Thunderbird email, uh, rule sets. Is this one editable? Okay, not editable. Okay, and they're looking for specific directories and this is by design, okay? And so if we move down the tree, uh, master backup, quick and backup files, exclude from backup, Norton Power Eraser, there's 28 rules in amongst that one, system files, temporary, temporary files, program files, file extensions that they don't want you to back up. Um, and then down the bottom here you can see that I've added a rule in and there's nothing in it at the moment, okay? And I want it left that way. Back up always, there's no rules to display. What should happen if rules to files that are unaddressed by the above rules? It says do not back up these files. Maximum revisions, all right? So we're just talking about how many revisions of a file are we going to keep? Once I hit a thousand, it will just overwrite the first one. And it's important to understand that the maximum number of revisions is in effect how many versions of the same file. So it's like previous versions and a customer can get their own files back. Okay, so that's what it's all about. Okay, the backup algorithm, we're using differential hash, um, differential compare or full. Uh, variations there. Differential hash allows me to use uh, the file system in particular in a better manner so that I get the smallest amount of backups being backed up. And we'll talk about that in a second. And so if you do that, you can just hit update. Um, not scannable. Scan only fixed and removable drives. Total one rule. So let's go in here and and see what this rule is talking about, okay? And in here, I'm not scanning removable drives because that could generate errors for me. So drive type is fixed, okay? I don't want to scan removable hard drives because it could, could cause issues if it's not there. Now, this one is going to take a few minutes to go through. So bear with me. And I will just close this up. This is not default by any stretch of the imagination. The default one is this one at the top. At six o'clock at night or one minute past six every night, that's the default scan. Uh, yeah, most people at today um, are probably, you know, may still have their computers on at six o'clock at night because we're all working from home and they might just leave it on for another couple of hours, whatever. Um, but the default at six o'clock at night or one minute past uh, six at night is pretty terrible. So I've gone and added in some normal bits and pieces that I would add. 
you know, thinking about all scenarios. Let's think about those blokes doing the elevators, about the big building assisting management systems, the real estate agents, the accountants, uh, whoever else we can, salespeople that travel around the countryside taking orders for this, that and the other thing. They're not doing so much of the travelling these days, but they're still doing their phone calls, as we all are. So I've added in 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, yeah, or never, never on the hour, of course, with, with me. It's always some time past the hour, so I've said 3 o'clock, uh, 3 minutes past the hour. So 3 minutes past 8, 3 minutes past 10, 3 minutes past 12, 3 minutes past 2 and 4, and then I've got one at 6 o'clock at night because I've got one up here at, sorry, 6 o'clock in the morning and then I've got one up here at 6 o'clock at night. So I'm done. I've got a schedule for me today. The order schedule is when I want you to set a schedule that occur every day at a specified time or every week. The order schedule is to tell me if a backup's not been happening. I need to know. And this thing will tell me. And I will get an email. Okay? I will get an email that says, hey, there's a problem with whatever, uh, something's not happening. I haven't had a full backup in a week, okay? And that's what goes on there. Upload the event log schedule every day at 9.30. And that needs to happen, so the, it just pulls it straight out of the Windows event log and says, um, schedule, that will happen, and I can then use that information. It, so far, that's pretty straightforward. This one down here has some smarts in it, okay? And let's look at those smarts. This first one here says use use icon overlays. I'll just minimise this for two seconds. And you see these things here with ticks on them? They have been backed up already. This one here is a shortcut. And it hasn't been backed up. It's in a warning. It's in a warning state, and whatever else. So I can see they're they're called icon overlays. Only appears when you put this product on. Okay, uh, forgive me for that one folks. All right, some advanced properties folks. Now this one, these start to get in a little bit of detailed, okay? And so here we've got debug log enabled, yes. Debug log size in bytes. Upload debug logs, yes. Upload re-verified, retry in seconds. Okay, you see a few things, retry delay for storage, repair bad blocks, yes, maximum, see this one here, delete enabled in client UI, that's enabled, very, very bad thing to do, you should go and go, no, I do not want the client to be able to delete in the client UI. Delete enable can be changed by a client. No. Why is that? In case CryptoLocker gets hold of a client's laptop, I do not want because the client, and I'll just quickly show you right here and right now. See this? It looks like a system folder. That is file backup and recovery. If CryptoLocker can get a hold of this and it can start processing down through this, and I'll show you all about this shortly, folks, it's, it's fine at this point. 
all right, but it can see some of this sort of stuff, okay, and it starts deleting and or encrypting and whatever else, uh, you don't want the client to be able to delete enabled in the client, so don't let them do that. Um, if they specifically need something deleted, that's why you're there, that's why they're paying you the dollars. You can delete something for them if you want to, or if they specifically require you to, you can do it for them from here, somewhere, okay? So that's something that should be done by you to stop CryptoLocker from taking them out, okay? Now you'll notice here, bandwidth shaping schedule. Now this is something I've already set up because there is just one, basically there is one setting that just says, let's knock our socks off and away we go. This thing is sensitive to its current bandwidth, okay? So what I've done here is, you know, if the computer's turned on on Saturday or a Sunday or a holiday, uh, we will assume it's at home, uh, knock your socks off and use as much as you want. However, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, whenever you're in downtown um, local shopping mall using that UBU shared um, council provided Wi-Fi, um, only use a certain amount of bandwidth, okay? And you can just pop open here and open up the one for Monday and see what time and so we're going to use 40% or 45%, you can change the whole thing. Okay, so down here I've got it set at 50%. On Monday you might say, no, I'm going to be in a terrible place, so I might only want to use 30% and I can go save. And every computer that you add to this particular um, um, backup policy, that's what they will do. Okay, exactly the way it will be. And so that is the standard configuration that we have. You can create one for every single different customer. You can do multiple things with this. And so now, and you'll notice there's no save button on this stuff. Once you hit the little individual save buttons all the way down here, okay, you've got that over there. There is no big save button. So we can just go back to backup configurations. We can now go back to our dashboard if we want to and have a look. So in here now, What's the whole scenario? So, um, sorry folks, in here I can actually go and say, right, I, I can actually deploy from here. So I can go down to uh, software downloads, okay, and from here I can actually go uh, click on this one and it will, it will show me how I can actually run a particular uh, deployment. So oh, you know, I've got to play the game today. Okay, that's fine. But from here, you can actually go and deploy the software either via a script um, that you can. It's just a batch file, and that batch file will actually change. Will actually include the account name. So in here, if I click on here. <coughs> It will include the account name that I'm, I'm using, file-based backups um, for this one. Uh, there were, is another one back in here that is uh, not configured yet, this one here, the, the free one that I have. Um, and you can see here, no backups are complete for that particular machine at the moment. I haven't configured it correctly at all in any way yet, but you can add uh, file-based backups for that as well and do what you need to do. So you can deploy it two ways, you can follow the simple um, text, do it manually, or you can just send somebody a script. Now what happens when you put that installation in place? And that's the part we're going to now. So I've deployed the software to this machine and I've done nothing. Okay, so I'm going to click on this machine. What this machine actually does is it sends up, shall we say, a capture of all the files on this particular laptop that we're talking about here. So we're talking about Jack's PC, which is the one I'm sitting on. And 
the last audit received was today. The last backup audit was 99.25%, yada, yada, yada. You get the picture. Here is we can run the backup analyzer. So the backup analyzer is a quite clever, useful tool. And the typical question I will ask anybody is, would you like me to back up all your PDFs? And the typical answer for most people is, absolutely. And I'm going to go, really? Hello? And I'm not trying to be facetious here, folks, but I don't want to back up all the PDFs. And I'll show you why. Let's go into the C drive, okay? And let's go down to uh, Program Files. Right, I know in Program Files there'll be Storage Craft at least. So let's go into Storage Craft and we'll go into SPX. Okay, and we'll go into Docs. And we'll go into ooh, yours. Okay, and let's go and have a look inside of this one. Okay, and what is there? All right, there will be files in there that are down here, EULA PDF. And so you could have a look inside of any of those EULA files you like, and they're all PDFs. Do you want to back them up? And I would simply say to somebody, I don't want to back them up. So come up here and you go, create an exclusion rule set. Warning, excluding this will eventually prevent 14 files from backing up. You go, I understand. All right, where to apply? Okay. Action to take, do not back up. Okay. And here I'm going to apply to my standard configuration and select the rule set. And it says, Jack, all sub-exclusion rules. That's why you have it created already. And I click OK to that. Oh, come on, I did pick you. Go, oh, yes. And action to take, do not back up. Okay. So yeah, you can change it all around. Okay, so I'm gonna pick my standard rule again. I go in there and go, do not back up, and I go, save. There's a whole bunch of EULAs in there. Did I just screw up, did I? Let me just double check that, folks. Exclusion rule. I understand. Put it in there and <laughs> save. Okay, that's cool. All right, so that's how you can go about saving those out. Now we can go all the way back up to the C drive and see what else we got. Under program files x86, what is under that? Uh, Foxit software, I'm sure under Foxit read somewhere. There's some stamps, extended templates. All right, down here you can always see what they are. All right, standard templates for Foxit Reader, I use that as my thing. And you can actually come back up to here and you can go create an exclusion rule. Do I want to back them up? I understand. Uh, do not back up. Okay. And just go save. Again, more saves. You know, so there's a lot of things that you can expand on here and say, I do not want to back it up. All right. The beauty of this is that you do not have to go to anybody's computer. And up here, it's also going to have a look at the, uh, the okay, you can have a look at this, for example, you know. And over here, items to review. Okay. You can go over here and suggest it. All right, suggest it for backup. Total items. All right, and it's going to go down and, and you know highlight these items for you, 
and give you an idea of, of potentially suggested for backup. 103 files. It'll list them all here. They're actually saying, you know, rerun the analysis to update the values below to reflect their current expectations and let it rerun it again. The beauty of it is you do not have to go anywhere else looking for, you know, bits and pieces. It's all here. So it's now listing, you know, uh, three gig worth of file. And you can go down here to users. <coughs> and you can expand out Jack and whatever. However, something that's more important, let's go back to our backup configurations. And if I go view edit here, See here, what would happen if Microsoft were to change, um, see how this thing's not editable, right? And Microsoft were to change their documents from DOC, uh, they've changed them from .doc and to .docx. What would happen if they were to change it from .docx to .docxy? Just an argument, you know, what, what, what would happen? How would you get around that particular problem? With every other program on the market today, as, of, as far as I'm aware, um, you would have to go and add in uh, an exception to allow those to be added in. So you'd have to add a rule set. So in here you would have to add a rule set that um, backup rule sets, all right? So I could add this one here, uh, always rule sets, suggested files, uh, master not scannable. So you pick one of these ones. So this is a Jacko, Jacko also backup rule set, for example, and we'll use that. Okay. I'll go confirm. And in here, um, add a new rule. Okay. So this one could be a file extension rule. Um, yeah. For the hell of it, whatever. Give it something and go apply. Now that would automatically become part and parcel that as soon as that came out, I could just go and that would become uh, work new. Jeez, Jack, you're a brilliant sort of typist there, mate. That makes a little more sense. And we'll just go OK, we'll go so. So as soon as that came out, I would not have to worry about those 1,400 laptops that are out there or 2 or 10 or 12. It would automatically be there and as soon as it turned up, this thing would go, oh, look at that, I found one of these new types of documents and away it would go. So that's one of the nicest features around this sort of thing. So now from a client's perspective, okay, it's already been backing up from the standard thing that it's got, but the analysation file that we've got um, allows us to see exactly what is going on. All right. So in here, you can actually see uh, I've got, I've got 17.6 meg backed up of this particular machine already. Okay. There are 13. 103 suggestions to review, monitored items. You can put, you know, that might be somebody here with a, I don't know, a, a uh, database that they use for uh, at their accounting software. And if you don't get a full backup of that, of that every week, you can actually put an email alert in place to actually get that email sent to you and you can ring him up and say, hey, mate, what's going on? You know, as part of a service, you could actually say to him, you need to turn that thing on today 
and force a backup. Okay, go down to the to, to the database and go right click backup. So there's a whole bunch of things you can do around all of that. It's all with the end you know view end user reporting, uh, scheduling or whatever. So let's look at it now from a client's perspective. This is what obviously you see. Now I'll open this up again and. From a customer's perspective, they come into here. To make this a little bit simpler too, folks, I have excluded the uh, EDF and the G drive out of it at the moment. I've just uh, just the C drive only at the moment. So you'll see here that there's this volume looking thing called Storage Graph File Backup and Recovery. Uh, Jack's PC, yep, there's the certificates, current set of certificates from there. This is the OS drive and you've got the, the couple of things here, right? So I, get, I can go into users, um, I can go into Jack, and I can go to the desktop. Okay, and you can have a look at any any one of these particular items. This is my home, home one, obviously. Uh, if I go to cloud text, all right? There's only one revision of it so far. And most people, when they came to this point, would go, yeah, there's my file. They would double click on it. And they double click on this thing. What is this? That's only the first revision. Now, this is why you don't want them to have the delete rights, OK? Because if they have the delete rights here, they, and you don't want them to be able to delete that thing. See, I'm pressing delete here now. There's no delete here. I can try a shift delete. Ain't going to work. You don't want them to, but of course, if they do delete here, they're going to delete obviously in the cloud. So first thing, revision one. So what can they do? They can open it, they can retrieve it, and retrieve means to put it back in the original place, so they can stick it on their desktop again or wherever it came from, or they can go restore too. If they want to restore a copy of it, do somewhere else. Those are the things. Um, so let's have a little bit of a play with something. Um, what is on here that we don't really care about? Cloud, we call it give an issue. Um, oh yeah, this is a, something I'm doing, doing a little research on. It's a mid-drive uh, e-bike conversion for my mountain bike. I can't keep up with my grandsons anymore, folks. So I'm getting old, apparently. So. Um, See how this one's gone to uh, an orange warning signal. Now, if I was to wait for another two hours, that would be automatically backed up. Okay, in the schedule, because it's gone past three minutes past twelve down here, that would be automatically backed up at three minutes past two. Now, it's an important document. Yeah, you know, I know that's not an important document, folks. You and I both know that. That's just a piece of junk for Jack's sort of part-time stuff. Um, so what you can actually do is go right click on it and you can go storage graph file backup and recovery and I can go backup remotely now. Okay, so there's a current, current scan in progress so it's actually doing one at the moment but at some point in time I can go right click on that because it's uh, you know only three minutes into a scan right now with including those couple of changes I've made and it will just go ahead and do that itself, all right? So what does is, what is the rest of the GUI look like for this thing? Pardon me. <laughs> this is the GUI. Um, they don't need to ne necessarily mess, mess too much with it. You can see backups, you can see restores in here. The other one that uh, This is uh, the transfers um, in bytes per second and you can see currently where it's up to at the moment with what it's doing. Um, hit refresh on it, sometimes you'll see some bits and pieces happening. Uh, so you can see exactly what it's doing but in here you can go and update uh, client credentials if they've lost 
access, I would say by the refresh that's happening behind the screen here, if I just minimise that, I should now be able to go and say back up remotely now. No, it's still working on, that's okay. Um, Most people don't even stress about what's here. They don't even, I don't even bother opening this thing. I've never opened it on the other machine. This one, I've just leave it alone, let it do its job. Sometimes you come in here and you go, oh, look at that, that's interesting. I wonder what's happened there. And you have a look, but it is pretty foolproof. It just does its job. The hard yards comes from you dealing with what's inside of here. You set up the configuration from top to bottom you had a machine into this particular account, it picks up all that information and you just monitor it. That's it. Nothing more difficult than that. The worst part about this thing, and, and you've seen me a couple of times today go to different places and go, where the heck do I find that bit again? It, it has a different interface. It's cleaner than it used to be. It is a little strange to find your way around this thing, but once you do, um, it's been a little while since I've logged in, it, it'll throw you out after a couple of minutes. Uh, once you find your way around this thing, it is quite simple to set up and it is very, very effective. It is great. Okay, so here I can change the password, I can change all these other bits and pieces. Okay. Um, so you can do all the bits you like, the uh, rule sets, okay, so you can see the rule sets that I've created, backup rules, exclusion rules, always rules, you can see my standard configuration here, okay, um, you can go to the dashboard, add a new account for a different company, okay, uh, end user reporting options, this is the one I'm currently using. You can modify the storage capacity, okay, yeah, by default most of us only get um, 100 gig. You can change that, uh, the sales guys can ex explicitly can change because this one's a complimentary um, MSP one that I'm using. Uh, they don't charge you for this one, this is the uh, free one for yourself to test and play. Um, uh, but moving on from that folks, it doesn't work, absolutely. It certainly does work and it just sits there in the background. The more you put into this part of it, the better it becomes from the client perspective. So from that point, one final thing, what happens if young Johnny um, loses his laptop and young Johnny's going to? Okay. How about the uh, CEO of an organisation, how many times have you seen him lose his laptop? Our ex CEO, I know, and one day he went through three. He uh, got a little violent with the first two. This product would have been an ideal product for him because I could just send him a text file which he could change to a CMD file and it would have said, I'm now the same computer as I was before, joined back in, and it automatically adds the application in and configures it to be that computer that he had in terms of the backups and it brings all his files back down onto his computer. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. And it was just, it would save so much time. Particularly for those guys managing you know, like the buildings and stuff like that. So it uh, has its places, gentlemen. Absolutely. So, are there any questions, folks, based on that? Question here from one of the guys, just bear with me for a second, the partner view and possibly the end user customer. Well, this is the partner view obviously, okay, and muted. Unmuted. Who muted me? Was that you, Peter? Anyway. Wrong 
like him. But anyway, um, if I go back into here, more time you spend on getting this part of it right, this is the MSP's perspective and this is the client's perspective. Now you might have a file sitting on one of these other drives, for example, right? I might pick on one of these particular drives. <laughs> That's all my personal stuff, which is probably not pertinent today. But I can go into here, and I can actually force a backup out of one of these. Uh, we'll go into white papers 2017, draft finished, and you'll notice all these that have got no backups on them. I'm looking for one particular one that was of interest this morning. Wrong machine, Jack, that's why it's not there. Well, it's not there, I will take this one for the heck of the exercise. And I'll go back up always. All right, and it will come along and add it to the list. And when it's finished, and I can actually just say to it now, back up remotely now. And it'll go ahead at some point and just back it up. And it'll say, fine, now I've got to add that to my backup. So it'll just do its job. So the client side can do. So Paul asked the question, um, so by default each machine is backed up once a day, but you can change that configuration. Yes, Paul, you can, and you should. You should always change it. So this is the standard configuration that I've just used as my default, and I don't like the default configuration. So you can see I can add stuff into these pieces up here. Um, some more bits in here where it changes, backup algorithms, not scannable, but this piece here, this is the piece that I will always change. And look at this, instead of the one at just six o'clock at night, and I ignore the minutes for the sake of the exercise, please, gentlemen, ladies and gents, um, the default is one minute past six every night. That to me is not a good scenario. The biggest thing I could ever say to you when you do this for the first time round, make sure the customer is connected to a decent decent, you know, internet connection. Let's get the base image set up into the cloud and then after that it's just the differentials that are happening. That they're, they're uh, a clever differential with local storage is what I use. Um, that way I can keep a change locally and then whenever I've got a connection I can then just change those those differentials can go straight up. Very small, very smooth, very tiny changes, right? But please add in, every couple of hours is fine because we're only talking, it's not like Shadow Protector's doing the whole machine. These are just the important files and if they want to store them in some really strange places, doesn't really matter. That's what the analysation file is all about. Where do you store this stuff? And that's what it's all about. Where did they store this stuff? We don't care because we can find it. And that's the important part, I think, is ten spending the time to analyse the analysation file to say, here's a backup for these people. Okay? So this is, in my opinion, where you spend your time. The schedules, all right? Um, the advanced properties down here, most important you do this, turn it off, because if you don't, CryptoLocker will take them out and they're going to come back at you. Bandwidth settings, they're out and about all day long, okay? Even if they're from home, you know, the rest of the family, like currently the rest of the family is at home in Australia now, we're all locked down, um, not allowed to go too far, we go for a bit of a walk, you know? at times, but set your bandwidth settings, particularly, in, and think about normal times, Monday through to Friday, they're out and about, your sales people, your mechanical people, your building maintenance people, set all this up before you apply it, think about it, work with it, 
and, and try to imagine their life and come from there. Okay. Once you've got this stuff all sorted, then when you put the first account on somebody, all right, you then can come back into here and you can go into here, click on that first computer and then you can run the backup analyzer and you can go, right, what have I got to do? Okay, current directory list. And then, then you can go ahead and do this, all of this stuff. You can go ahead and do what you need to do. Okay? So that answer your question, Paul? I think I believe so. But anyway, folks, if you have further questions, I have taken up taken up quite a bit of your time. Um, to which I do thank you. I know these days we we are basically all working from home uh, because of the the virus. Um, but my last words to you are: we're here to help you in any which way we can. Uh, but my last words are: please be safe. Please be safe. You need to. Okay. And hope your families are safe as well, folks. If you have any further questions, please reach out to your distributors, to your your uh, STC account managers, your storage graph account managers. Reach out to us in general. If you have phone numbers, email addresses, just reach out, and we can do what we can to help you out. Okay. So at that point. Thank you very much for your time and have a great Thank day. Thank you, Jack. Thank you.